Hi, I'm Zach. I'm with the video team. And with me today are Ned and Kramer. They're both writers. Um, we're all part of the creative department here at Crutchfield. And we were lucky enough recently to get our hands on some really great Leica cameras to test out for a little while. know about you guys but I'm a photo nut like you and and I just was salivating over the idea of being able to use these cameras out in the wild a little bit. The one I had was the Q2 monochrome a uh, very interesting black and white sensor only and um, a fixed 28 millimeter lens on it and just blinding detail and just uh, I, I couldn't believe how sharp and awesome it was. So I got into photography as a kid my Dad was a math teacher. We lived on a private school campus and we had access to a darkroom. And I got a Pentax K1000, a uh, very famous student camera, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, as my first camera and learned how to do that. And we, we learned how to develop the film and make prints from the larger and use all the chemicals and hang things up and use the little red light and everything. And it was just kind of magical to me. And I really uh, got into it from then and then... Um, you know, in college, found other things to do for a while. And then when digital came back, really just kind of reawakened uh, that creativity in me. I started with Canon DSLR and then um, have shot with a number of them uh, through the years. But um, the digital kind of reawakened my interest in film photography also. So there was a period of time right after my first kid was born where I shot three or 400 rolls of black and white film and developed them myself. I didn't have a dark room, but I would develop the film and then just kind of scan it and stuff. But shooting with this Q2 camera brought back a lot of those memories because just looking really close at black and white files, just, I don't know, it makes me happy. And it's kind of a different creative process a little bit. And what you look for is a little bit different. And I kind of like looking at the world that way. And it has a very fantastic black and white viewfinder so I can really see and kind of preview what I'm shooting in black and white, in black and white. So I, now I can look through here and see the world in black and white. And it really, really helps with finding those great shadows, finding those great things you want to take a picture of. It's got a fixed 28 millimeter uh, F1.7 lens on there. Reasonably fast lens, good for lower light, super shallow depth of field. With a, with a 28 millimeter lens, you have a lot of depth of field anyway, but when you uh, get this sucker opened up real wide, it's got a nice, beautiful bokeh in the background where you see those out of focus highlights are nice and just round and beautiful. And uh, I, I really, really enjoyed uh, using it. It's also got um, manual controls on the lens. It's got a shutter speed dial here. It's got a really nice focusing scale. Cool thing it does in the macro setting, when you turn this macro, lens you see the focus scale shift because it's doing something in there to let me get closer to the subject to shoot it and now I've got a new focusing scale so I know where I'm in focus and where I'm not. Just really like the mechanicals of these cameras they're just so precise and so well machined and just so well made it's just a it's like you get your hands on a really really high quality tool or something and suddenly you realize, oh, this is why people get really high quality tools. Really enjoyed it. Um, it's not perfect uh, for me. I mean, we all kind of shoot a little differently. Um, one thing I really like to do with uh, some of my other cameras is shoot at waist level. And that requires a screen that flips up. The screen doesn't flip up. That's one small regret I have with it. But that said, very easy to uh, adjust your shooting style to, to that sort of thing. Um, I like how they do, uh, even the mechanical stuff, like how the battery pops out is cool. It requires another little push to come out like that. And I haven't, I couldn't tell you how many times I've dropped the battery on the ground because I'm not paying any attention and I release the thing and it just falls. Well, I like a thought of that and that's impressive. And it's just everything about the camera that's mechanical, physical, is just so well done and um, just quite amazing. I like how they do the, the viewfinder uh, where you can dial it in for your vision. Uh, it 
pops in, pops out. Um, it's now it's nice and flat, and when I need to adjust it, I just pop it, comes out, turn it. It's just a nice, it's just a nice, it's nice in the hand. Um, you know, in, in a perfect world, I'd like a little grip right there, maybe. But, you know, if, if this were my camera, I'd probably buy one of those EverReady cases, those leather cases that goes around it, right. gives you a little bit more grip. But they have this nice thumb detent right here. When you grab a camera, it's, an, it's often like this, and it's nice to have a, an indent right there that's the, size, the shape of my thumb. It gives me just a little bit more grip on there, and I really appreciate that. So it's just such a well-thought-out machine. Cool. And like a, you know, famous for this red dot right here, that camera, the black and white one, is just so incognito. Yeah. Because it's just, it's a blackout kind of camera. I mean, the, the, the numbers are in white, but there's no, there's no color on the, on the, on the box itself. I've seen a lot of Leica shooters over the years that will put a piece of tape over that red dot sometimes to kind of blend in a little bit because, right. you know, you, you might, it just, it's one little thing, but I, I, th I think when you're, if somebody's aware that you're taking a picture of them sometimes. Yeah, it helps you you blend into the background. But yeah, it's a very clean, uh, um, very unobtrusive camera. Which camera did you get a chance to So, use? well, I used that one for a while. I really, really loved that one, um, especially that it's a fixed lens and, and, and you don't, you can't change it. So you don't have to think about what you might change it to. So you can sort of uh, make the most of it and just sort of get into that world. Um, but this one is the M10, which is a lot like a camera I grew up with, uh, except my, the one I grew up with was a film camera, um, M M1 or M3, I can't really remember, um, or I don't really know what it was because I wasn't paying attention at the time, but I used it for years. It was my dad's sort of second line camera and he let me borrow it and learn on it. And, um, so it seems strange to me that someone would pick up a camera like this and be like, what is going on here? You know, having the having the f stops on the the aperture control on the end of the barrel like they do here, that's exactly what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. uh, having the focus ring where it is, that's exactly what I'm used to. Having the shutter speed up here is, is pretty typical. Um, this one also has this cool. You lift it mm. to change the ISO. So even if you set the ISO in the menus here, you can also set it manually up here, and you can also set everything to automatic. Um, uh, except for the focus, you can't auto focus with this one. You, this is manual focus only. So, you know, you, you, means you you got to look. You can't just rely on the camera, which that's that's just the way the way I'm used to anyway. This one still is pretty, you know, old school. It doesn't have. You can't just access everything from the bottom uh, without taking off this mm. old brass base plate, and then the modern is revealed inside. Um, your battery and your camera and your card hatch but it just everything just feels so solid you know um you're not scared to take it out like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna damage this this is a real heavy duty tool it it's i guess they are priced like a luxury item but the reason is because they're just really really good the the non-ergonomic you know, that it doesn't have a grip in front like this. We got a little, little hint of a thumb rest mm. right here to make it more comfortable. But that just feels natural to me, um, based on 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 what I grew up with. Um, but this camera, even though it is the the one that I a lot like the one I, I grew up using, it it did take me a minute to get back into it and, and to find the sweet spot. But the, what I found was that I really needed to let go of, 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 of scrolling through any of these menus and just really take over again in, in manual settings. And, and that's, that's the beauty of it. What's the compatibility of lenses on that? This is an M mount. So like it's been making them since I don't even know how long they've been making them, but the fifties at least the fifties, right? yeah, that old camera that I grew up with, I could take the lens from it and stick it on here. Very cool. Um, and so yes, poking through, used lenses and finding old old M lenses. Not that they're going to be that cheap because, as you said, Leicas really do hold their value. But people who have them tend to take care of them and they're, you know, just as good now as the day they were made years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hearing the, the background of you guys is fascinating because I never shot film growing up. Um, 
my introduction to digital or to, to photography was through digital photography. Uh, my first camera was a crop sensor DSLR, and I really learned how to take photos um, in the last five years. It quickly became like my favorite thing in the world, and uh, my my specialty, what I love doing the most, is going out for the sunrise and seeing what develops in the sky, what interesting things happen um, as dawn breaks. And what I'll often do um, is go out during blue hour, you know, that, that magic hour before the sun rises where the, the sky turns that sort of inky blue. And you can just kind of watch the day unfold um, and you get all different kinds of cloud patterns and different kind of um, light gradations and yeah. wild different kinds of color in different areas of the sky. Um, and the seasonality of the sky is what's so fascinating to me. Um, you know, the way that sun tracks different times of the year where it rises or where it rises and sets. Um, and it's just a, it's a great way to experience the natural world. And for me, it gets me out of bed early. It gets me out, gets my steps in. And it lets me experience something that I wouldn't have ever thought to look for. Um, and to me, that's the fun part about photography is you really never know what you're going to find when you go out there. And, you know, every beam of light that comes down is unique. I mean, you know, these photons that are coming in will never reflect off these surfaces the same way again. And so every photo really is a unique opportunity to capture a moment. Uh, and that's what makes it so magical to me. So I have the Leica SL2, which is a 47 megapixel full frame mirrorless camera. This is actually pretty similar to my daily driver, which is a Canon R5, um, a very similar uh, resolution in, in terms of image quality. Out of the box, I found this to be a, a treat to hold because of the, the unbelievable build quality. And it's something that's apparent the, the second you pick it up, it just feels, what you mentioned earlier, exactly like a high quality tool. And that's, that's exactly what it, that it feels like in your hands. Um, this is a 35 millimeter Summicron F2 prime lens. And I have a 35 millimeter F1.4 Canon uh, that I've, used for all kinds of landscapes and um, uh, street photography and environmental portraits. And this held its own and then some in terms of richness and clarity and depth of color, the edge to edge sharpness. I was, I was truly impressed. Uh, the camera itself, I was not expecting it to have some, some real goodies tucked away here. There is a full size HDMI output. So if you wow. want to connect this to your television and look at your photos, to your computer monitor, it's very simple to do. And my favorite feature, and this might seem like something small, but for me, um, excuse me, it was really nice, is that you can charge this camera through USB-C. So you don't have to take the battery out and look for your charger. For me, I can just plug my phone charger right in, charges up the camera, I'm ready to go. Um, that was a real nice treat for, for me to discover. And... Overall, I found the camera um, quite intuitive to use. And one nice thing about these Leica cameras is that the menu systems on these digital cameras are, are quite similar. So I had a chance to play around with the, the Q2 monochrome and found the menu to be just as easy as an intuitive, uh, the color-coded menu as on the SL2. And that's nice because you can go from platform to platform and have some immediate familiarity when you pick up the camera. This is an L mount, so any of Leica's L mount lenses will fit, as will those from Sigma and Panasonic that use that same mount platform. So if you have some high quality glass from another manufacturer, those are fully compatible with this camera, which is, which is really nice. Like you, Zach, I do a lot of waist level uh, shooting. Um, often I'll get down the ground to get some interesting perspectives and angles. Uh, I do wish this had a flip out screen, but I, I've learned to work around that. The only thing I will say that I wish I had was um, a battery grip with the vertical controls. And I have enormous hands, and so I, I really do appreciate the size of this camera because it fits aesthetically and, and ergonomically, it fits me quite nicely. But I found myself wanting to be able to have some controls here. That's, that's one thing I, I would uh, enjoy seeing uh, as available. Uh, but all in all, it was an absolute delight to use. And I'm looking forward to uh, getting the photos that I took uh, printed up and on display in my home. What about the uh, programmable buttons on there? That's, I don't think that's a feature of these two, but that's a pretty cool feature on that, I thought. Yes, um, that's something where you can just simply press and hold uh, the, some of these buttons and it allows you to quickly customize your own quick settings. So if you wanna jump in and, and change from 
um, one mode to another or change uh, a white balance setting or this or that. You have easy access to your menus and it's nice. And that, that way you can really make it your own experience. You know, you're not just limited to the default controls or settings. Um, it gives you the ability to customize it for what you're looking to do uh, in whatever genre of photography you find most uh, appealing. I th you can tell that photographers had a lot to do with designing this camera. Uh, sometimes I've shot many a uh, uh, camera, uh, digital cameras, where it's pretty clear that the engineers had the last say in a lot of stuff <laughs> yeah. because there's some really counterintuitive stuff going on. This thing, uh, the Q2 monochrome, you push the menu button once, your quick menu comes up, the stuff you need to get to right away. And then if you need to get into the nitty gritty a little bit, you just press it again, and now you're in there. Yeah. So every time you really just need the five or six controls that you usually need while you're shooting quick to quickly push. change, boom. Yeah. And know? this this is, you know, all the, the the live views on all three of these look really similar, and the and the button layout on the for that is is, yeah, I agree, really intuitive. Just little little really. details like that that Leica has really thought, has clearly tested and thought about, and that's something I appreciate as a yeah. as a photo nut. One of the things that struck me when I first unboxed these cameras was just the unbelievable build quality. Uh, you know, these are handmade in Germany, one by one, and they're built to last forever. And it, it brought me back to a, a phrase I heard um, about 10 years ago, we hired a firm out in Richmond called Caravadis to build us um, a farm table, a dining room table. And they specialize in reclaimed and salvaged materials. And they had this old church that they had salvaged uh, with these old beams from the 1800s that they had used to, to make our table. And when we came out to, to, to check on it, uh, they said, uh, you know, we build things that are meant to be handed down, passed down instead of torn down. And that always stuck with me. Uh, and I imagine that these cameras will last a lifetime. You know, if, if you were to buy an M10 or even the new M11 or the Q2 or ESL2, these are cameras that will pass down to our children decades from now and they'll still be taking amazing photos. Well, guys, I had a terrific time using the Leica cameras that they were kind enough to lend us. I'm going to be sad when we box these up and send them back. But so I'm, sad. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting some prints made up of the images that I took. Yeah, uh, please uh, thank our, our Leica representative uh, for this opportunity. We really appreciate it. And I'm thanking you for, and you, for, yeah. for doing it, you know, because <laughs> I get a message from you, what, a month ago or so, saying, we've got these Leicas if you want to check one out. It's like, yes, I do. I didn't have to twist your guys' no, arms too much. Though. No, no. Eh, they've been a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. This was a real treat. Well, thank you, Kramer. Thank you, Ned. Thank you, Leica. And if you want to check out some of the Leica cameras we have on sale, check out our website. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.